By the 1980s, nurses and midwives had been seen as society's carers for more than a century. However, contemporary nurses and midwives were professionals who wanted a career structure and wages to match it. In the early 1990s, the Keating government made sweeping changes to industrial relations laws, which saw enterprise bargaining agreements become the model for wage negotiations. The then Australian Nursing Federation was expected to be a bit player in the new format. The union and its members had other ideas. In 2000, the union had reached a stalemate with its EBA negotiations with the Brax Labor government. Thousands of nurses and midwives had left the profession because of poor working conditions during the years Jeff Kennett was Victorian Premier. The new ratios would bring them back, but the union needed to convince the then Fair Work Australia that the radical changes they were fighting for were indispensable. The negotiations had failed, the beds were still closed and the government sent it off to the Commission and we had a Commissioner Wayne Blair who had to go to Perth because he was watching his daughter play netball. Commissioner Blair was the Commissioner who we ordinarily would end up in front of for disputes in our sector. So all of us had to go to Perth. Commissioner Blair was technically on leave and was with his daughter who was playing um, sport over there. And we would negotiate during the day and then Wayne would come back from the basketball <laughs> and hear how far we'd got. I'd sit from six o'clock till about midnight every day um, and that way we were able to deal with the, the case within the time frame that the parties were happy with. Wayne's role in it was absolutely paramount and significant, clearly, because he was the one that said, yes, you can have nurse patient ratios and a range of other things that we, we were also given in that EBA. There was qualifications allowances, there was training, there was increasing wages and a range of other matters that formed the part of a package that was designed to encourage nurses to come back into the public hospital system. Hearing uh, Belinda deliver the outcomes, uh, it was a, a sense of disbelief that finally the, the profession was being recognised. It was beyond my hopes. I mean, we, we were hoping, but I just couldn't believe that we actually got them. That's how important it was. That's how important it still is. Equity, good conscience, and substantial merits of the case. They're the three principles I relied upon. Uh, I had competing arguments, but the merit of the argument of the union was the one that stood out to me. There was a new world order uh, for nurses and midwives in Victoria. For Victoria, we were going to be leaders. Prior to the nurse and midwife to patient ratios becoming law in 2015, there was not a single enterprise bargaining negotiation campaign where the nurses and midwives were not fighting to keep them. Research showed that having minimum ratios in place in hospitals, less patients died and more nurses and midwives would stay in the profession. The limits the union's members and staff were willing to go to to keep them proved formidable to every state government they came up against. You sleep and dream ratios, wake. It's just about the enterprise agreement when you are uh, in the middle of the campaigns. There's a lot of effort uh, and thought from our membership, our job reps who are fantastic, all of the staff at ANMF in relation to preparing for the log of claims. And of course, yes, whilst we campaign and achieve things during an enterprise agreement campaign, it's also about maintaining all of those things that you've been successful in getting uh, in a campaign, maintaining it throughout the years when you're not campaigning. So it never leaves you. If you've got one nurse to four patients compared to one nurse to eight patients, it's going to cost a lot more money. So there was always a lot of opposition from government. I remember the constant battles after that with all the other EBAs to just hang on to them because from then on in they were under attack, I can tell you. And that's where I think the ratios aren't just, you know, an us versus them achievement for the nurses' union, it's a gain for the profession. Make no mistake, if there's a threat to uh, remove ratios, uh, nurses will take industrial action while at the same time always respecting and looking after their patients' interests. The Victorian nurses set a world standard, not just an Australian standard in the effectiveness of their industrial action. I mean, they were closing in some of the big teaching hospitals every fourth bid. 
uh, and they were getting community support. So in industrial relations terms, that's what you would call World War Three. Well, nothing else mattered. Your friends, your family, nothing else mattered. You were just focused. Uh, it was the most important thing at the time. I think it would certainly make the life of a director of nursing or an, or an executive director of nursing much easier because they know they're never going to have to make a decision about the number of staff. It's done. There's a sense of unity, I think, because we know that we're working within a safe framework. It would have been some form of madness for uh, anyone to try and take them away. It was the single most important achievement and the single most important benefit for nurses that we'd ever achieved. The government knew that that was our position and um, they always tried to corner us so that we'd end up in a, um, in a situation where ratios were under dire threat. There is no way I would want to work when there's not ratios. We have days where I feel like I can't give the patients the care that they need. Even with the current ratios, I can't imagine what it would be like without them. Governments have been trying to put nurse to patient ratios up for grabs as part of an enterprise bargaining process. And every time the nurses have said no, we're not going to go there because we know that ratios save lives. And what the nurses said, uh uh, the task we do is we look after nurses and the ratios go straight to that issue. It, it regulates the task. It doesn't just talk about time, it doesn't talk about wages, it regulates task. And if, if there's patients who need care, then the staff follows that. It's not up to management to decide who makes that decision, it's the, the workflow itself. That is revolutionary. Very few other people in the world have made that kind of breakthrough and that's what the Victorian nurses did. Our members weren't going to give up their ratios at all easily. They were going to fight for their patients. Ratios are essential for patient safety and job satisfaction, it's bottom line. If I feel uh, a bit flat or I'm stressed or I'm worried about how things are going, uh, when I'm out there in the hospitals meeting with, with our nurses and our midwives, when we were doing those community rallies, 33 across the state, um, I took my strength uh, from nurses and midwives. There have been many difficult moments on the road to seeing ratios legislated, but none was tougher than the 2011 EBA campaign. The Bailiw government had secret plans to remove ratios, and with them, everything the ANMF and its members had worked so hard to achieve for patient care. Salvation came in the form of a rookie error from a naive opponent who should have known better. What was incredible about the 2011 campaign was this opening salvo, which was the leak of a cabinet document showing the government's tactics as they attempted to water down nurse-patient ratios uh, and introduce a whole lot of what they called efficiencies and save money on nurses' wages. So that really, I think, set the tone for that campaign. When Michael Bachelard contacted me and came and met me with that document, that reinforced uh, for me the absolute lack of respect that I thought the government had, uh, particularly at that time. People responded really strongly to that leaked document, particularly nurses, but also ordinary people who had come to expect a certain quality of uh, care in Victorian hospitals uh, and who didn't want the nurse-patient ratios to be reduced and to get less skilled people, healthcare assistants, coming in and doing nursing work. It was remarkable and a very critical turning point uh, in our campaign uh, and I suspect a pretty critical downturning point for the government. It was for a cabinet, it wasn't meant for public distribution and it was really a naked sort of political and financial document which didn't take any account of the kind of level of care that people had come to expect in Victorian hospitals. I'd never seen a leaked cabinet in confidence document. Um, I didn't know that it was on special paper. I think the government of that day underestimated the ability of the nurses to rally uh, and it overestimated their own ability to push through something that was really a huge change uh, in Victoria uh, and would have been a, a really a, to reclass the way hospitals worked. Uh, and to do it in the context of an industrial campaign, uh, I think that was pretty naive of them if they thought they could get away with it. The union has used new and traditional media in a masterful fashion. 
to get maximum exposure, every available platform and more are utilised to fight the good fight. The battle for ratios, improved wages and conditions has often been illustrated by a sea of red t-shirts inside their statewide members meetings and at marches through the streets. The red t-shirt is a unifying symbol of ANMF's members rise from hospital trained workers to an educated professional workforce. As nurses and midwives numbers have grown, so has the sea of red. The close call on ratios in 2011 made the ANMF even more determined to see them enshrined in law. The legislation of ratios was something many nurses and midwives never thought they would see happen. But when an election was called in 2014, the ANMF knew it was time to take action. Premier Daniel Andrews made the historic commitment to legislate nurse and midwife to patient ratios in the lead up to the 2014 state election. Ratios save lives. It's as simple as that. They are at the centre of the care that we provide. Uh, they're at the centre of what is widely regarded as Australia's best health system and one of the world's best health systems. Uh, that's not by accident. It's because of teams of people. Uh, nurses are at the centre of those teams and ratios are central to the work that nurses do. When you look at uh, any political party campaigning for government, you know, it's a long, hard slog. But you've got to do the work. If you want to be a good government, then you've got to be a good alternative government and you've got to listen to people and and do the hard work in developing the best policies. These promises, these commitments would not have come if it wasn't for Lisa uh, Fitzpatrick and her team, if it wasn't for ANMF delegates, members, uh, and those who work for the union, putting their hand up, arguing, convincing us, making the case that these matters needed to be, on, be beyond doubt, that ratios needed to be off the table, not part of the negotiating process. ANMF delegates and members and the union's leadership, they convinced us of this. These changes would not have happened without them.